Well, hello and welcome to this presentation on uh, environmental attitudes and behavior by the UK Data Service. My name is Pierre Walteri and I am a research fellow with UKDS. So, what are we going to talk about in this session? Uh, three things mainly. So, first of all, I'll say a few words about who we are for those of you who uh, don't know UK Data Service very well. Then I will provide a broad brush overview of uh, the kind of data that you can find uh, at UKDS in relation to environmental issues. And then I'll come back to uh, talk a bit more in depth about um, specific uh, examples of data sets that you can use. Right, who are we? Uh, the UK Data Service is the main repository of uh, social science uh, data in the UK. Not only that, but it is also a provider of support, training and guidance for our users. It is a single point of access, freely accessible uh, and funded by the ESRC, the Economic and Social Research Council. So the data and the service we provide uh, is uh, historically aimed at academic researchers and students and still uh, are, are, uh, who still are uh, a large share of our users, but also government analysts, uh, charities in the voluntary sector, business consultant, independent and private sector research center and think tanks. Um, the data we curate uh, comes from various sources. Uh, the main uh, bulk of them, I would say, are UK social surveys, so be it large scale cross sectional government surveys, such as the Labour Force Survey series, for example. Um, or major longitudinal surveys uh, such as understanding societies in which individual people are followed over time. We also have uh, provide access to uh, multinational survey data and aggregate data banks. We have a portal that allows users to access census data with uh, uh, modern uh, recent records or historical records. Uh, we provide access to business and administrative microdata as well as a range of uh, qualitative uh, resources. Uh, in terms of user support and training, uh, we uh, have a help desk in which uh, we answer queries and help users with any issue they may have when using our data. We uh, produce webinars and online workshops uh, that are targeted at introducing users to specific data sets, methods or software. We also uh, have some uh, online learning materials and a growing collection of it actually, uh, which are similarly uh, targeted at introducing users to specific data or methods. Uh, our core business, so to speak, is about survey-related data, but we increasingly uh, have resources about new forms of uh, data and computational social science. And we also strive to supporting data literacy among undergraduate students. Right, now let's start our tour of uh, social science data on environmental issues. Uh, I thought it useful before actually diving into the data to think about the kind of research or the kind of approach that can be uh, had uh, when thinking about environmental issues. So first of all, there's the substantive aspect of uh, the environmental crisis. Uh, that people can be interested in researching carbon emissions and energy use. They can be interested in uh, looking at loss of biodiversity, pollution and resources depletion, 
or uh, in re individual or collective resilience and adaptation uh, with regard to these challenges. Then there's the issue of the level of analysis. Uh, depending on what your research interest is, you may want to look at individuals or household or even uh, geographical aggregates such as regions of a country, countries themselves or even continent. And finally, there's the question of the kind of data uh, you want to look at, uh, whether it is attitude and social representations, uh, whether it is qualitative narratives or even behavioral uh, data, or who knows also uh, organis organizational behavior. So now let's go back to each one of these type of data. I'll start with uh, social representations and attitudinal data because they are probably the most common one can find in our data sets. So at a very broad uh, degree of generality, uh, you can see that attitude can be seen as people's views and representations about uh, aspects of the climate crisis and the levels of support for um, policies that or changes that are put forward. Um, these type of data are common in qu quantitative surveys, whether these surveys are fully dedicated on environment issues. Uh, I need to tell that we don't have many of them actually. Uh, but more commonly, much more commonly, uh, as part of modules, uh, thematic modules on environmental issues or si even single questions in uh, more generalist uh, surveys. Uh, what are the main studies where you would find these? There are lots of them, uh, but um, just to look at the four main ones here, uh, I would mentioned the British Social Attitude Survey, which is the mainstay of uh, social attitudes data for the UK. Uh, Understanding Society, which is a large scale longitudinal study in, with also attitudinal data. A uh, specific survey on nature and the environment is the People and Nature Survey for England with attitudinal data. And also, uh, if you're interested in international data, the European Social Survey or the World Value Survey. Now, thinking of behavioral data, I probably need to make a pedantic uh, clarification here. We are talking about still uh, people's reporting their behavior and not uh, a direct observation of uh, their behavior, which is uh, usually costly and rare to be found in social surveys. So behavior is a broad term and can potentially apply to many areas of research. We can be Ill interested, in, for example, in be uh, political behavior, so that is participation and voting. And for this, we can uh, look at the a British election study, which has a wealth of uh, data about voting behavior. Uh, behavior can also mean consumption. Uh, and in this case, uh, the Living, and, Living Cost and Food Survey, LCFS, which is a, a long standing study with very detailed data about consumption patterns uh, of the British population, uh, would be recommended. Then uh, there's also commuting and travel related behavior. Uh, and several surveys have data about these, but we would recommend here using the National Travel Survey or even the census. And I will come back to this uh, in a little while. Um, in terms of uh, interaction with the natural environment, the People and Nature Survey for England that I already mentioned has some questions about the way people uh, interact or behave with the environment, whether in terms of protection or uh, 
going to green, visiting green spaces, for example. And finally, in terms of uh, broader uh, issues such as energy use or CO2 emissions, uh, we curate also uh, OECD and uh, International Energy Agency databases, which have uh, data, aggregate data on these uh, quantities. A third type of data on which I am not going to spend a lot of time uh, is uh, qualitative data. We hold uh, 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 an increasingly large uh, deposit of interview or multimedia uh, data. Uh, this is due to the fact that ESRC uh, funded um, uh, researcher and investigators need to deposit the data they collect uh, after their project is, has ended, which means there's uh, uh, an increasingly large uh, number of material and some of which about the environment that is available at UKDS. Uh, it is accessible via uh, reshare, uh, which is a, a section of our web website. Now, <clears throat> quickly, uh, how to find and access data from the UKDS. There are basically three ways, and I'm going to go through it very quickly because uh, this is something you can find on by clicking on the links uh, on the presentation and on our website. So either via data catalog, um, and there's a search tool I'm going to show you. Uh, there's also a variable and a question bank uh, in which you can search uh, variables and uh, questions uh, across most of our surveys. There's the same for our qualitative uh, data resources. And there's the Hasset Thesaurus, which is a keyword search of the keywords uh, present in all our quantitative studies. Um, so searching the catalog is very straightforward. You just need to enter your search terms in the main search box on our website. It will then be offered with a long list of uh, studies, uh, for example, when looking for climate change, uh, that you can filter uh, using variable uh, a number of criteria such as size, uh, uh, date, etc. And then you, you will finally be able to access uh, the study page. However, and I'm saying this for uh, maybe the less seasoned researcher, uh, whenever you are uh, zooming in on a particular data, on a particular resource, uh, do not forget to ask yourself essential questions uh, about the quality of these data. So uh, what was the phrasing of the question that led to uh, this uh, uh, quantity variables or in case of qualitative research, uh, what was the research question and who funded the research? Uh, is it all, is the sample uh, of respondent representative? Is the sample sort la large enough uh, for your purpose? And what was the population of reference? And obviously how recent is the data? And so it's also maybe uh, in order to avoid disappointment, it's also interesting to make sure that uh, the data is uh, readily available as opposed to uh, subject to an application, which leads me to uh, our data access policy. So uh, we have four layers of access uh, depending on the data uh, that is being curated. The most common one is the second one, safeguarded data. A large chunk of our data uh, is available under end user license uh, for which uh, only a registration is required. And so in some cases, uh, filling a special license form. And once you have registered, then you can uh, easily uh, download any data set you like. Uh, a more uh, data more at risk of leading to uh, disclosure uh, is only accessible 
under control settings and uh, subject to a, a more substantial uh, application process. Uh, reshare data, I've already mentioned, uh, is subject to each print investigator's approval, but most of the time it's unproblematic. And finally, open data, uh, especially our teaching data set, uh, is freely available and, uh, and without in, to anyone without registering. Uh, how to register? Uh, this is also described on our website. Uh, you can do it either via your organization or via a UK data archive username if you are independent researcher or from the private sector. Uh, our data is free, except if you are a researcher working for a for-profit organization. Now, going back to uh, the examples I was mentioning earlier, <clears throat> uh, Let's start, let's dive in a little deeper in the type of uh, data that we offer. So attitudinal data. I mentioned earlier the British Social Attitude Survey. So it's a well-established survey since 1983, and uh, it allows for cross-sectional, repeated cross-sectional analysis of uh, people's views and opinions about a wide range of uh, topics. Uh, it's really the main port of call for uh, research on attitudes in the UK. Uh, it's uh, based on a representative sample of uh, adult UK adult population aged 18 and over. And uh, in the last 10 years has an increasing number about, of questions about the environment. There's also a byproduct, uh, uh, an open access uh, teaching data set uh, that was derived from the 2017 BSA uh, in, that offers um, a small subset of variables about uh, environmental views and uh, environmental politics as well. Another example or, or, or point of call for people interested in attitude data is understanding society. Why so? So understanding society is a really uh, large longitudinal survey in which the same people are followed over time and have been so for several uh, decades now, or some of them at least. Uh, so it allows you to uh, look uh, at associations between uh, your outcomes, so uh, the attitude and data, and a wide variety of uh, factors that have also been studied uh, uh, by um, previous waves of the of the survey. Uh, it has a dedicated website, in addition to the UK DS1, in which you can explore in depth the data that is available. I'm just providing an example here on the uh, thematic uh, environment page of Understanding Society, which provides a little bit of background. And then the variable search um, here, uh, which enables you to uh, look in a very fine-grained way for uh, the, the type of uh, variables you may be interested in. Uh, and each uh, individual variables has its own uh, page for which you can see uh, who was asked the question, uh, at which wave of the survey, and also you can uh, have a quick uh, overview of the distribution of the variables and the number of observations. A second study uh, that is also, uh, or rather a third one, that is also very interesting for uh, pe people uh, or researchers interested in environmental issues is the People and Nature Survey for England. So it's one of the few uh, surveys specifically dedicated to the environment. It's commissioned by DEFRA and Natural England. Uh, so no data for Scotland, Wales or Northern Ireland, unfortunately. And uh, it started during COVID, 
and offers uh, 34 monthly connection, con collection uh, between 2020 and 2022. It's questions are asked about attitude about the natural environment, but also interactions, uh, what people, uh, what kind of contact people have with the, the natural environment, and also um, uh, behavior towards protecting uh the environment so just an example here most of these uh questions of interest uh are part of uh, the module four of the questionnaire so just so that's an, uh, an example of question uh, in that people were asked thinking about how you live your life uh with uh the so how 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 are we uh, trying to help with the um, environmental crisis so and you can see a number of uh, answers here uh, type of analysis derived from the pans uh, the, this survey shows here the contact or visits to green spaces by uh, household income. And you can see that the lower your household income, the less likely uh, people are to uh, visit green spaces, uh, although the differences are uh, not huge. And uh, the second, uh, another example uh, of this set here, uh, is the census. So we don't necessarily think of the census as a survey, but the, it, it is the case that people are asked a number of questions about their commuting patterns uh, in the census, uh, which allows uh, to, for example, look at uh, the duration of commute and uh, commute and mode of commute uh, by local areas. Uh, in the UK, which is uh, potentially interesting for planning, uh, local planning policies. So we have, there's an interface to the census, and this is the sort of uh, analysis you can perform from there. Another uh, and final maybe uh, type of data that we hold, and I mentioned it uh, quickly before, is uh, International Data Bank. So the, this is the, interf the UK data service interface to or, or portal to uh, the international energy data. And you can see that uh, via this interface, you can select an, uh, a number of variables of interest, such as CO2 emissions, and uh, uh, you can uh, uh, select data that is uh, related to either countries, regions, uh, or continent, and download it for uh, further analysis. Is that all there is? No, of course. We have much more data, uh, just to name uh, a survey that I haven't had the time to talk about is the UK time use surveys of 2000 and 2014 and 15, which have detailed travel behavior, uh, much more fine grain than what I've uh, mentioned so far. Uh, also that include data about remote working and uh, leisure behavior. And again, uh, please consider reach the reshare repository of deposited data, because it's not only about uh, qualitative data, it's also about uh, maybe less usual type of, or less traditional type of data, such as uh, social media usage, for example. Um, well, that's it. Uh, I need to thank you for uh, your attention. And please do not hesitate to ask questions uh, directly uh, at the webinar or um, by sending an email uh, at this address. And I will try, I will try my best to uh, help you. Thank you.